Okay, so now we'll be looking at the uh, application of greedy principle in designing algorithms for TSP. Uh, and here, I mean, we have a couple of uh, important notations that we'll be using throughout this uh, this sessions. Uh, the very first al greedy algorithm again is in the key. Uh, features that we'll be looking for is how we can actually break down a, a loan and combinatorial consideration into a single step consideration. Right? This is where the saving is coming from because if you want to look at all the possible combinations, then uh, we either will be uh, looking at the exponential numbers of possibility or it will be factorial numbers of possibility that is the case for TSP. But if you are looking at the um, only one step at a time, then it's going to be linear right? in the numbers of cities. Notation-wise, we use S to rep represent the set of the cities that we, sh we can consider. T will be the tool, uh, the tool that constitutes the, the current solution. So the step is actually very simple. Initially, uh, you can see that uh, inside the um, the T, which is the uh, holds uh, the current solution, uh, is uh, one CT that you pick randomly, right? And then of course you have to remove this particular CT from the uh, consideration, which is inside S over here, right? And after that, this is the initial setup, right? This is initialization. After that, you just simply enter a loop. Inside this loop, you're going to uh, continue uh, whenever you still have candidates as uh, inside the S. And whenever you are going to uh, pick a candidate, you pick the CT that will generate uh, the smallest distance to the last CT you have selected. Okay, so then you continuously doing that. So this is a very simple process. Uh, we can use this uh, the example, this five CT example from the earlier slides to illustrate how this will work. Okay, so this is the the greedy solution, the steps, right? So let's try to actually just probably do it from scratch. I think probably you will have a better view about what exactly happens over here, All right? So let's probably just do it. All right, so uh, this is the uh, replication of the, uh, the distant matrix. And again, we have to go back to see the initial condition because the first CT is being chosen randomly, right? And of course, the different initial CT would produce a different sequence. So we have to make sure that we are um, we are synced, right? So your T initially is empty, but after you pick uh, the first CT, is actually Belfast. We use the initial to represent our current choice, right? So based on the uh, greedy principle, right, we're going to pick the next CT based on the distance to the last chosen CT. The last chosen CT is B, right? So under the row of B, you look at the next instance that have the smallest number, which is D over here, right? So your next choice as a result will be D, doubling, right? Because the values are one, one, six, seven. Okay, so after that, you move on to the row of doubling, right? So you know that Belfast is out of consideration. D is also out of consideration, right? So when you move to D over here, Right, which is the last CT you have selected, you look at the possibility, right? You have one, two, three possibility. Limerick is the next options that you shall choose. Again, after you choose it, you remove it from consideration, remove it from S. So from Limerick, you look at the other possibility. You can either go Cork or you can go to Galway. Uh, both actually have the same uh, distance, right? You can actually pick arbitrary ones. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. So let's say we pick randomly, right? So we pick uh, maybe cork, right? Uh, from the list. And after that, of course, you have no other choice. You have to pick Galway, right? That's the only option that's left to you. So as a result, your tool sequence will be from B all the way until G, right? But the real uh, sequence will be, the real tool will be from B to D to L to C to G. And finally, back to B again, right? Remember, this is TSP, right? So you always, no matter what sequence you generate, you always have to return to the beginning of the CT. And if you count for each and every age, you can actually enter 
uh, the distance, for example, this is 167, DC is actually 257. Uh, sorry, this is not TC, this is a D to uh, what? Oh, D to L actually, sorry. I, yeah, this should be L. So D to L actually give you the distance of uh, 198. And then L to C give you distance of uh, 105. And then C to G give you the distance of uh, 209. And the final uh, lag over here is from G to B, right? Look at G to back to B is 306. So if you sum up everything, you get a cost of 985S illustrated in the slides. Okay, so I think this is the first design, right? You can see that indeed uh, this is a this particular greedy solution uh, can use very simple steps. Right. That's the reason why it's, uh, it should be very fast. Even you have uh, hundreds of CTs, no problem, because the only thing you have to look at is uh, uh, really the next CT candidates, and this is linear in the numbers of remaining CTs. All right, so this is the greedy solution, and we do have an implementation in the graph lab. You simply just go to uh, uh, the graph lab. You will find a function called greedy1 that implements exactly the pseudocodes that we have described earlier. Right. If you're interested in uh, like how this uh, implementation can be done, you can actually go there and just check it out. Right. The second greedy algorithm is slightly more complicated. It still follow the same principle, but instead of just focusing on the, uh, the distance to the last selected city, we now allow us to consider when we select a new candidate, we, we actually consider all the previous cities that we have already collected, we have already selected. Uh, we will actually consider that. Right, so in stepwise, you see that this is slightly more complicated. Right, you see that you initially start with a pair of cities, right? That would be the pair of the cities that with the, the the smallest distance, right? And then you remove those two cities from consideration. That's inside S. And again, this particular step, this while loop is the same. Whenever it's still cities in S, you try to find the next cities where you have the smallest distance to any of the CT that's inside the current tool. Right? You call this particular CT that have the smallest this, uh, CT to the new CT X, uh, this CT is called Y. Right? So again, after that, you try to insert the X either uh, before Y or after Y. Right? You will generate potentially two different calls. You will pick whatever sequence, uh, a place where you do the insertion uh, based on the, which one actually have the lower cost. You always do the insertion that give you a lower cost. So it can be the first case, it can be the second case, right? And you continue from there. So again, this is still a greedy design because every time when you pick a new CTX, you don't need to look at future combination. You only look at the current combinations, right? Which is uh, based on the current list of uh, possibility. So that's the reason why, I mean, the consideration wise is still, uh, you only have a linear numbers of uh, alternative that you, you have to look at. Now we're going to begin uh, the second uh, greedy approach. So you can see that the first choice that we're going to make is to look at uh, like any pair that have a, a lower cost. You can see that of all the value that's inside this particular distant matrix, um, LC and LG actually have equally small value. So again, you have to randomly pick one of it to be the smallest. So let's say we start with LG, right? So your tool as a result, current tool will be L, go to G, and then go back to L, right? And if you calculate the value is actually to 10, right? That's because it's uh, essentially the first leg uh, is actually 105, the second leg is also 105, right? So you have 210, right? The next step, which is step one, this is step zero, right? Step one, you try to look at all the other alternative, right? So now you cannot choose L, you cannot choose G, right? So they are being chosen. So you only have B, C, and D as alternative, right? So uh, you try to pick the CT that was the smallest CT, uh, smallest distance with one of the CT that's already inside T, which is G and L. 
So you look at G and L, right? Basically means that this two row over here, you try to pick the city that will result in the smallest distance in one of the row. So it turns out that the cork, CT cork actually have the smallest distance to the current CT that's inside the tool objects, L and G. So it's uh, because it's 105, right? Okay, so, and this distance happened for uh, at the point where uh, C and L are being connected, right? So if you look at it uh, in step one, your X, the new CT that you're going to choose will be cork, right? And the Y, which is the CT that have the smallest distance to the X CT, the new CT, is actually limerick. It's called L, right? Okay, so now you have a choice, right? So L is actually the target CT, right? So you have this L, right? If you look at it, LGL uh, is actually the same as uh, GLG, right? So it doesn't really matter, right? So you have two ways you can do the insertion, right? So you can uh, insert the new CT C after L or use a, uh, insert the new CT C in front of L. This is number choice number one, choice number two. You calculate which one is uh, with the smaller cost and you will go with it. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Let's see how it goes. Right, so we'll write out the uh, possibility uh, separately and write down the cost. Right, the first possibility is actually because we insert C after L is going to be L C G L. Right, the second possibility will be we insert C in front of L is going to be L G C L. So let's look at take a look. Right, so if you look at the distance, right, L C L C, these two cancel out. Right. G, L, G, L, again, they are exactly the same, so it cancel out. The center part is C, G, or G, C, again, it cancel out, right? So it turns out that no matter where you do the insertion, for step one, the cost will be the same, right? So you can pick arbitrary one, right? So let's say the one that we produce, uh, we just pick, you have to pick one of it, even, even though they are of exactly the same cost, right? So let's say we pick the, uh, the first one, right? The first one will give you L, C, G, L. Okay, so the current cost again, if you calculate that, will be 419. Step number two, right? This is your current T, right? So again, you have to pick the C is also out of consideration, right? You have to pick the new X, right? Your, your new X can only be B or D, right? And you have to look at uh, now also C, right? You look at these three different rows and look for the smallest numbers uh, in the column of B and D. So it turns out the, the column, the, the cell with the smallest value in these three rows will be doubling, right? With the cost of 198, right? So D in this case as a result, X in this case will be D. And it happens when Y equals L, right? Because D actually maintains this cost of 198 with uh, CTL. Right, so now you have two again two possibility where you can do the insertion. You can insert the uh, the the new CTD after L, which give you L D C G L, or you can do the insertion that's right before L, which give you L C G, and then D L. Right, two possibilities. Uh, again, you will look at ways where you can actually do the uh, canceling, right? So these are all the legs. Okay, if you look at it, L, D, D, L, right? Just cancel out. And then G, L, right? Uh, this cannot cancel because G, L doesn't really appear over here. And then you look at the uh, L, C. Uh, L, C doesn't really appear, so you cannot cancel it out, right? So here, but uh, here, you, if you look at it, CG, and this is also CG, right? So this can be canceled out, right? So you cancel this out, CG, CG. And then basically that's it, right? So you're comparing essentially the, the cost of DC plus GL. So this is DC plus GL. And down here, this is the cost of LC plus GD, right? You want to find out which one is greater, or which one is smaller, right? So DC actually give you, if you look at DC is 257. 
GL is actually GL105. You look at LC, LC give you 105 as well. And then GD, GD give you 219. Right, so 105 part is the same, but this one GD has a lower value than DC. So this should should be the one that you choose as a result. So your tool object as a result become L C G D L. Okay, and if you calculate the cost, the total cost actually is uh, seven three one. So now. D is also chosen, right? So you, you have a one final choice, right? So this one, uh, Belfast need to be inserted, right? But again, where it need to be inserted depends on, so X need to be B, but uh, where it, it need to be inserted depends on Y. So you look at the Y, right? So again, over here, it means that you, you have uh, to look at uh, the rows of C, D, G, L, and look at the, uh, the B, which one has uh, the lowest value. So it turns out that 167 uh, is the lowest value. So your Y is actually CTD. Okay, so uh, it means that you're going to surround uh, this uh, CTX uh, around D. So either before D or after D, right? So you have two possibilities. It's either L, C, G, B, D, L, right? Or L, C, G, D, and then you insert B after D, right? B, L, right? So again, you when you compare, there's a lot of common elements. So this one can be canceled out. C, G cancel out. Uh, you see B, D also cancel out. So in the end, the real comparison that you're making is just G, B, right? G, B plus D, L versus GD, right? GD versus uh, BL, right? So again, over here, you can calculate GB give you 306. DL uh, give you 198, right? And then you look at GD, GD give you 219. BL, uh, BL give you three, two, three. Right, so you calculate a bit, you can see that both number, actually this one is smaller than this, this one is smaller than this. So the first one, as a result, should be smaller, right? So the final tool object, as a result, it should be L, C, G, and then B, D, L, right? So this is how you can derive the solution that we have in the slides. And if you calculate that, you see that the distance is actually 9A5, exactly the same as greedy one. Okay, so uh, we can continue the class. Here you see this is the illustration of how the two different greedy design uh, works in the case of TSP. The second case is um, slightly more complica complicated than the first one, but in this case, for this uh, small case, you can see that the complication uh, doesn't really necessarily mean that you can do have a better performance. Right? In this case, it doesn't make any difference. So because we don't really have a lot of combination, only 12 of them, right, based on the previous uh, complexity analysis, so we can actually, for each and every possible case, possible tool, we can actually calculate distance. The true optimal, you can see from here, uh, is actually uh, 940, right? Um, the uh, solution that we obtained by using both greedy approach is 985, right? So not too bad, no? but again, you can clearly see that even for a small case like uh, this 5CD example, uh, the greedy approach, although it's fast, it doesn't grow exponentially. Uh, it still, I mean, just doesn't really generate the true optimum, right? And this is uh, essentially the, the kind of trade-off we are happy to take. All right, so again, the greedy tool is available in the graph lab as well. Okay, so uh, before we go to the practice, again, I would like to summarize this a bit. Uh, I think one key thing I'd like to highlight in this session is that they are graph problems in real world. Actually, majority of the graph problem in real world, uh, they will be uh, intractable, right? particularly I mean, for TSP. I mean, this is a classical 
a di a difficult problem. Um, but doesn't really mean that I mean uh, there's, n there's no hope, right? Uh, for the case of TSB, if we are able to come up with a good enough heuristic, you can actually get pretty. Uh, I would say that pretty competitive solution within a very reasonable amount of time, right? And as you can see from the uh, this TSP website, uh, you can actually get very good, very high quality solution, even for the case of uh, United States. Uh, you have uh, more than 10,000 cities, but still you can actually solve for optimal, right? So this is something that basically demonstrate that uh, still a lot of hope, right? So you, even you have a very difficult, very tough, difficult problem, if you apply a different uh, powerful heuristic design principle, you can actually get pretty good uh, solution. So what we'll do next week is uh, we're going to explore another very important branch of the design idea that we call it uh, local search approach. Right? Let's see how, we, how we, we can actually do it next week. So to cap this week's uh, content, uh, yeah, very simple example, even uh, fewer than the, the previous case. We have this full city example. Just try to execute the greedy one and also greedy two, right? So that will serve as a practice. If you can actually execute that on this very simple example to demonstrate that you know how to execute the algorithm. Right? So for greedy one, very easy to ex execute. But for greedy two, if you don't know how to track the execution of the algorithm, you can uh, basically, you can try to use the, uh, I think the step that we actually use uh, in the just happened just now, right? In the one note, you cannot see that how we can actually use the pseudo code, uh, materialize that in the real steps to track the uh, progression of the algorithm using real numerical numbers.